In this video clip I'm going to go over how to go into your scanner, set up uh, the basic Epson scanners, um, go over a few steps on setting in and how to scan your thumbnails, uh, which some of you guys will be doing a lot of hopefully. So first thing we need to start in is to find the scanning software. Some of you may have it on the dock, which mine is on the side, could be on the bottom. I don't have my scanning software in the dock, so we need to go to the applications folder. Easiest way to get there is make sure you're on the desktop and the finder options are up. So you can click on the desktop uh, until you see the finder. If you're in another application, it'll give that application name. So once you have the finder, you'll get the Go option. If you go to the Go drop-down menu, and under there, there's applications. You can see the shortcut there, Shift-Command-A. Bring up the applications folder, and for our scanner, we have... I have an Epson 2400 scanner and this is the same software for quite a, a variety of different scanners. So same interface for a lot of different Epson scanners. Um, 1000, uh, 1000XL is a uh, pretty popular Epson scanner model. We've got the Epson 500. So there's several different scanners. So I'm going to launch that by double clicking that icon in the applications menu and we'll get the Epson software. A lot of you guys are probably not used to seeing the full auto mode. So a couple features. You have the full auto mode, the home mode, it's going to give you a different feature here, and the professional mode. So I would suggest that you work in the professional mode. Uh, you do have the other options if you have the home mode or it looks different, you don't see the professional mode options, that would be found here under the mode option. As we get going you have other things that we can do in current settings, variety of different things. Um, we want it to be reflective. Most of the Epson scanners have the ability to scan in film. Uh, if you're using a scanner that's used by a lot of photographers, in our lab we have photographers that come in and may have set that to film. So if you've got that film and you want to scan in your thumbnails or roughs or black and white drawings, you're going to want to switch that and make sure that it's reflective. Okay. Uh, auto exposure type, you can do photo, document, you have a couple different settings there. Uh, we like to stick with the photo, gives you a few more options. Uh, you also, down in the next options, you have your image type, you have uh, target size, so these little triangles indicate that you have options. And you may have more options depending on if your box is shrunk or not, you may get a scroll bar on the right. We've expanded ours so we can see all those options. If you're going to scan in color, you'd want to use the 24-bit. The lower bit levels are typically what most graphic designers are going to use. Uh, some cases, if you're a photographer, you're scanning in a negative, you may want to use the higher end resolutions. If you've got an illustration, you want to keep it at a higher resolution, you can. But that will limit your ability uh, to do editing, things that you have, features that you have in Photoshop will be limited if you use a higher bit level, the 16-bit for black and white and the 48-bit for color. So we're primarily going to stick to our 8-bit grayscale because we're going to focus on scanning in some thumbnails. Resolution, typically we don't have to scan these in for print quality. These are just for proof, just for viewability. So for thumbnails, we want to make take it down to 100 dpi. Um, depending on your preference. Some instructors, some clients like to see your higher resolution. Typically I'm scanning in thumbnails at 100 dpi. If it's a drawing or a line drawing that I want to live trace, I might even scan it higher than 300 dpi. Uh, but that's where you're going to get those options. Sometimes we want to increase that size. We're going to talk about that in a minute. That's the target size. Uh, typically the unsharp mask is on. That's debatable. Some people like it on or off. We'll leave it on for right now. Uh, we may turn it off later. Uh, as I come down, I want to check the preview option. So I'm going to go ahead and hit preview, which is going to take a quick impression of what is on my scanner, on the scanner bed. Okay. If I come in and switch the professional mode at this point, uh, switch from home mode, professional mode to home mode, uh, then I would lose this preview. Okay, you heard it quack at me as it was going. Didn't like me choosing that before it previewed it. So that will change your preview. You'll get an error there if I were to switch that. We're not going to worry about that right now. Uh, so that's your preview. 
when I come in here I just start and click I start clicking and dragging and I get my area my croppable area I can go ahead and scan the whole thing or maybe I just want to take just this one thumbnail of an old uh, here's some old thumbnails for an older logo that I was working on so we've cropped and maybe we just want to take just this one and isolate just this one logo so we can do that by doing that here isolating it there uh, we can scan the whole thing and that may be the best for your project depending on what you're working with depending on what you're trying to do but for our purposes here I'm just gonna highlight or isolate this one thumbnail so as we go in we can see that this is 2.24 by 2.89 okay I can change those measurements by dragging that that's the measurement of what I've got selected here depending on my scanner size what my rectangle size is here is going to change what's over here. Okay, so I can even type in a number 2.5 by 3. Okay, and that will adjust my size. So that's indicated by the selection here. If you look at the target size down here, you can scale that. If I want that to be twice that size, if I change it 200%, that'll update to 6 inches. Now I hit the tab key to update that information but that will change it my target size and give me a resolution 100 dpi to this scaling okay so if you're going to scale it if you need something to make it bigger now is the time to do it right at this point that's where you're going to get those features descreening we won't use I'll cover that next so at that point you'll hit scan it's going to give us another option prefix img start number so I can choose the destination right here if I hit choose It'll let me pick where I want to save that folder or a file, which folder I want to save it to. Do it to my documents, or I could go to the desktop. Now I've got a folder set up as scans. Usually I go ahead and select that one and hit choose. So my MacBook Pro HD users app, right there, desktop scans. That's where it's saving it. And it will give you a prefix number. So it may be at two if someone else is scanned, maybe at other numbers. I can name it IMG for generic image number one. I can pick JPEG or TIFF. Uh, usually we pick JPEG for small things. If we're going to scan it for something that's going to be in a graphic, we may want to pick TIFF. Okay. So typically you can do this if you have multiple images for a certain project. The name of the project, number one. The next one that comes up will be scan number two so we can go ahead and click OK and it will scan it go through the process and that's how to scan so when this goes through I wanna take another scan saved it opens the folder and it gives me a folder image number one we'll just double click it to open it in preview really quickly there's the scan okay.